Hey everyone, this is Kaizo War here, and today is my birthday, and I feel a little nostalgic today, so I wanted to talk about a game that kept coming in and, my, in and out of my life like a boomerang when I was younger, and that is Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga. And I loved this game as a kid. I loved it so much that I managed to get it five different times. <laughs> so the story is that I got this game on one of my birthdays, right? I got this game on one of my birthdays. I think I was like 2004, so my 2004 birthday was like, I was like, what? Seven? Yeah, I was seven then. I loved the game, played it a lot. I never actually beat it or anything, because I never get the chance to make it far, because I had other games at the time, like, you know, Pokemon Sapphire. I was, I forgot what other games I had. I know I had other, like, GBA games, but I had, like, a bunch of them, you know. <laughs> I had a bunch of them growing up. So, I decided, to, you know what, I'm going to take my Game Boy to school, you know. I'm going to be this rebel and take my Game Boy to school, and, you know, when teachers... Teachers get on my nerves. I'm just gonna play the games and play my games and ignore them, or play them during gym class, or you know what have you, right? And my backpack had a hole in it. And normally I would keep all my games in the bottom of my backpack. I didn't like it, I, it was I was one of those cheap backpacks. I didn't like have like extra like zippers and shit like that. It was just like one bag, right? So like one zipper, and I had this small hole in my backpack. It wasn't small. It was like really small. Like you know, it was like really not anything big enough for anything to fall out of. I did lose a couple of erasers, so let's say like those tiny nub erasers, uh, the ones you put on the ends of pencils, those were probably the biggest thing that could fall out the backpack and I'd probably miss it, right? So I decided, you know, you know what, I'm gonna just dump all my games in my backpack, you know, take them with me to go to school. And yeah, I, was, I thought that was a smart idea because, you know, variety, what would be the point of me bringing one game to school? What if I want to play Pokemon? What if I want to play Mario? <laughs> So I put all my games in my backpack, went to school, and when I came home one day, the game was just gone. Specifically, Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. And I was wondering, where'd my game go? And I looked in the hole in the backpack, and apparently it was just, it got bigger and bigger and to the point where my games could easily slip out of there now. And I checked all my games to make sure I didn't lose anything else. And uh, miraculously enough, I only lost Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. And that sucks because I s remember when I went to gym class, I swapped out the game to put in Pokemon Sapphire. And that copy of Sapphire wasn't even mine back then. That was my old, younger brother, so he would have been pissed if I lost his copy. <laughs> um, so yeah, I lost uh, Superstar Saga. So I had to convince my dad to go give me another copy. Uh, he was okay with it. You know, he was a little bothered because he had to spend more money that because he just bought like they got me that game for Christmas. So, you know, they had to go back and get me another copy of the game. So the next copy I got was, I think, shortly before a trip I had going to Chicago. I was born in Chicago, and we would often visit there. We don't visit there often, but we would go there at times. So I was like, okay, I'll take my Game Boy, me and my younger brother, my mom and my dad, we all went to Chicago. Oh, and also my older brother. So we went to Chicago, and we stayed at my cousin Jerome and his wife's house. And... I really didn't do much there. I mostly just sat in the corner and played games. Uh, my cousin Jerome had like, you know, it's weird. Like cable in Chicago is like weird. Like it had like all these like, channels that like obviously you know cable is different everywhere we go. But it just felt weird. I mostly watched like like old educational cartoons when because there was like nothing to do around Jerome's house other than play my Game Boy and watch those cartoons. And my mom and dad would always like you know go around Chicago, travel, and so they can see the city and everything. So me and my younger brother just kind of stayed mostly at home uh, at Jerome's home. And so when we came back to our own house, I re re I recognized that I lost like two games, one being Mario and Luigi and another being, I can't remember the other game, but I know I lost the second game. I want to say it was a Dragon Ball game. I think it was Legacy of Goku 2, I might be wrong, but it was, it was I know I know for a fact I lost two games up there. And I was like, no freaking way I lost this game up in Chicago. And I tried calling, I called up my cousin Jerome and asked him if he could see it, like a little cartridge around the house, but he said he couldn't find anything. And I was like, damn it. I don't know if he didn't look well enough, but when we went back the next year, it was just gone. The game never, the game apparently just poofed out of existence. So that sucked. Uh, so more convincing from my dad to go get me another copy of Super Star Saga. And he he was kind of done with me at that point because he kept saying like, "Are you kidding me, boy? I keep buying you these games again, and again. How you keep losing them? You need to keep them somewhere." And I really didn't have my games in anything, you know. Like I never had like a case or anything. I mostly kept my games in like this uh, this weird box I used to carry around. I used to have my Yu-Gi-Oh cards in. I was like a, a ten, yeah, like a collector's ten. And I didn't have a case or anything. I just throw all my games in there because that's the only way I was able to keep all of them. 
and it took a lot of convincing for my dad because like you know he, he just keeps going to the store and just buying these games for me and he, he got to a point where he just didn't want to go to the game store no more so he just gave me the cash and i went to the store and i asked uh the store I, the game store i went to was called a place called game exchange and they had this policy is where if you can play the game uh like if you had a game for about a month you can trade it in and you maybe trade uh, it's, a, it's a reduced price when you trade it in each time you do so and the longer the month goes the, sh the, the the smaller the price is like for example if i went to the game like let's say if i bought a 50 dollar game right in a week i'm able to change it exchange it back for uh 50 dollars for a 50 50 dollar game at least uh after two weeks i think it's 40 and after three weeks it's uh 30 and a month is f ooh 20 i think yeah it's, it's been a minute because like goddamn, it's been so long since i've been to that place um but yeah the exchange rate would go down each and every time so like normally i would wait out the month because the game was only like 20 dollars uh but it it, it the, the like the price it depends on the game you get like the policy was weird right because like if i got a 20 dollar game it would just drop by increments of five but if you had like a more, a more expensive game it would drop by increments of 10 or 15 depending on how big expensive the game was and like the games I had back then were never really rolled over to like thirty dollars because me you know, my dad was ch admittedly cheap. He was he he would never want to spend back in those days. He would never want to give me more than thirty dollars to spend on that game and barely because there was a copy of Pokemon Emerald I wanted, which was thirty dollars, and he told me no. <laughs> so anyway, and then moving on from that, I did get my third copy, and then. I used to trade games with these kids on the bus all the time, well, the bus I rode home. And they would always be super polite. You know, we trade games, we play with each other's games, and we trade them back. Simple as that. So there was this kid I knew, well, I didn't know, but there was this kid inside the back. He always trade games with other people. And I was like, okay, man, I trade with him. And he had a game called Naruto Ninja Council. I think it was the first one for Game Boy. And I was big into Naruto back then. That was like start. That was like around the time Naruto was coming on Toonami, and like it was huge. And I was like, oh man, I, got, I definitely gotta play this game. It's a Naruto game. It looks sick. So I played Ninja Council. Hated it. <laughs> I hated the first Ninja Council. I was like, okay, I didn't like this game. So I wanted to, you know, me to do it again and trade it back. Next thing you know, I learned that the kid actually moved schools. Like he moved schools. So technically, he stole my game. <laughs> <laughs> and I was stupid enough to trade my game to a kid I didn't even know. And so after that, my dad was kind of just done buying me Superstar Saga. And I was like, damn it. So I had to convince my mom. And, you know, my mom, uh, she knew about my dad constantly buying it. But she's like, she's like, you know what? He's, he's, just, a, he's, just, a, he's just a small boy losing his stuff. You know, my mom was somewhat understanding, but she, even she didn't, wasn't you know, fond of the idea of buying me games and stuff like that. My parents were OK with buying us games back in the day. But they were really strict on like, you know, like you better keep your game. We're not buying any more for you. My dad was just be that was like the first time in my childhood. My dad was really lenient on, you know, getting me things like that because they will always say like, well, if you lose your copy, we ain't buying you no more games like that. And my dad was really lenient on that. Like, I I'm surprised because like he would never do anything like that these days. Like if I was still a kid in these, in these times, he would never do that for me. <laughs> so this is my fourth copy of the game. And I wanted, I was walking home after it rained, because of course. And then I was looking around my backpack to make sure I didn't lose the game. I had a new backpack then, no more big holes. <laughs> um, so I looked around the, I looked around the uh, backpack, try to see if I make sure I have my games. I was like, okay, thank God, I found my games. I grabbed a handful of them because I wanted to count them, make sure I got all the games. Where I was like, okay, this is this, this is that, this is this, this is that. Perfect. Then I dropped freaking uh, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, Red Rescue Team, and Mario Luigi Superstar Saga in a freaking water puddle. And I was like, oh, no, dude, what the hell? Like, I was freaking out and shit. So I scrambled as quickly as possible to get the games and dry them up when I got home. And I, I tested both of them. Uh, Red Rescue Team and Superstar Saga, they work perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. Um, and then, like, I, like, two days later, Mario Luigi Super, uh, Superstar Saga just stopped working. Superstar Saga just stopped working. Red Rescue Team kept working fine, but Steven Star Saga, hell no. So I was pretty much asked out. That was my fourth copy of the game. I'm amazed my mom and dad just freaking just, just didn't disown me right there because I had time to get by that single game. So I managed to get some money. It was a combination of money from my grandma because uh, she gave me some games and some Christmas money. 
And my mom and dad gave me some money one Christmas. I was like, okay, yay, I can buy the games again. My parents never would never go in the store again. They didn't want to go into the game exchange again because there was nothing they really wanted out of there because it was a game store. They did sell movies and everything too, but like it really wasn't anything they were interested in. So this would be so I went back to Game Exchange. I bought Superstar Saga again, which was really hard this time because they were actually running out of copies, mostly because of me. Mostly because I kept going back up there and buying games over and over again. So when I got the game, I didn't play it right away. I didn't play it right away at all because that was right when I had Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green. I had a lot of Pokemon games. I had uh, the Legacy of Goku games for Dragon Ball. I had like I had a bunch of Game Boy games. Honestly, I didn't make a list because trying to think of all of them now is like I'm drawing a huge blank right now. Think of all of them. Also, I had like a freaking FIFA game, which was actually entertaining. Not gonna lie. <laughs> uh, I don't do soccer, but like that game was actually pretty entertaining to me. But anyway, yeah, this would be my fifth copy. I never thought about it. I just kind of put it away because I was like, you know, I, I bought Pokemon uh, Fire Red Leaf Green. I kind of wanted to play it then. So I kind of just didn't think about Superstar Slaughter. So about like, I think like a month later, right? I wanted to play the game and it didn't work. It didn't work at all. It just gave me, it, it, every time I will start the game up, I wanted to play the dude's uh, file who he had, the previous owner's file. I wanted to play that because he had like level 99. I think he hacked the game and shit like that. So I was like, oh shit, this is awesome. Next thing you know, I tried to start the file, crashed. It would crash each and every single time when I booted up because once I uh, get past the main menu screen, it would just hit like this red screen. And I was like, oh God, this looks horrible. And it would always emit this weird ee sound. It was like so loud too. It was like my, like my freaking, like my Game Boy flatline. I was like, okay, turn it off, turn it off. So I was like, okay, fine. Maybe it's maybe it's a dude's file. Maybe it's because it's a hack file. Maybe, you know, it's bad. It's a bad file. I deleted the file, rebooted the game. I was able to play uh, about 20, no, 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 about 10 minutes in, maybe 10 minutes in, when you get onto Bowser's airship to save Princess Peach, and then you encounter Fawful there, and then the game would turn red again. So I don't know what the dude who, the original previous owner had the game, but I only assumed that he hacked it and ruined the game and then when he just couldn't play no more he just turned the game exchange and that sucked ass so i was like okay fine it's been a month it's been a few weeks so that technically i could get my i can get five dollars back on this there was nothing i could have done with the five dollars except get some cheap ass games i probably wouldn't have wanted but it was better than nothing right so I tried to convince my dad to at least drive me back to Game Exchange. I told him, like, you know, buy enough for me this time. Just please take me back to Game Exchange. I was like, he was like, okay, fine. So we went up to Game Exchange. And then, like, I haven't realized, because I haven't been back to Game Exchange in that entire month, that the place was closed down. And I was like, what happened? Why is it closed down? What happened? It was, like, replaced with, like, a restaurant or something. And then I, like, I never knew this as a kid, but as I got older, I kind of learned that the reason Game Exchange got shut down was because of their policy. Because people were playing games for about a month and, like, or, like, you know, even shorter time exchanging them for more games, they really weren't making much money back. They were really lenient because their place was called Game Exchange. They were pretty lenient with their exchange rates, but because of how their policy dragged on into a month, and let you get back at least some kind of money for it, more than something like GameStop would ever give you, they lost money. And I, I kind of feel, I, I was kind of sad about that because Game Machine was a pretty cool place. It had a ton of games and they were always super nice to me. They would always have like this cool, like they always had this weird back room. They always had this cool back room where like they would have new game releases. They would only put them there because they wouldn't want anyone to get them yet because they didn't put them on store shelves. So they kind of break street release dates. And so I got some of the games, like some of the Game Boy games way before they came out. And I was like, I made everyone jealous on the goddamn freaking, <laughs> during recess. I was like, oh yeah, I got these games for y'all, dude. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like it just sucks. And I, I get it, they, they got shut down because of their policy, but that sucked, man. Because Game Exchange was a fun place. It really was a fun place. Um, and they had, they had the games hella cheap too. They had games hella cheap too. Like, 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 like you know how some game stores just have like you know old retro games or expenses of shit now. If if game machines were around today, they probably wouldn't have that. You probably like find really old retro games, mega cheap, and that's sad. But yeah, that was my history of Mario Luigi Superstar Saga, a game I got five different times. And each and every time screwed me over in some way. Or I screwed it over in some way. My bad. <laughs> uh, I never played the 3DS remake. I wasn't interested in playing the 3DS remake. But I did play all the other Mario Luigi's games. Except, what, 
I think Paper Jam, and I didn't play the remake of Bowser's Inside Story. Played the other ones though, but not those. Uh, but yeah, it, it, Super Star Saga was a weird one. The, the only time I recently played a game was like on my channel a couple years ago. Well, well, technically, I'm playing it now for this video. I'm just not playing it all the way through. I just I just need to play it for footage in my background. <laughs> um, but yeah. That's that's a weird, another dumb childhood story I got. So, yeah, uh, I'll see you all next time. I hope you all have a great day. Peace, everyone, and I will see you all next time.